nervously adjusting the uncomfortable wedding gown that clung to my body, I, Simon, stood on the precipice of a life-altering event. At nineteen, the impending marriage was not one born of love, but rather a haunting consequence of familial debt. I loathed the dress that draped over me, it felt like a cruel masquerade. I wasn't gay or transgender, but my identity was eclipsed by the feminization forced upon me. The B-cup breasts, unwelcome intruders on my chest, seemed to mock my predicament. As the clock ticked down to the ceremony, my thoughts wrestled with the gravity of my situation. I hadn't met my future husband, instead, I was an unwitting commodity in a transaction devised by my own family to settle their financial burdens. The weight of dread settled upon me as I awaited the march down the aisle, a mere pawn in a game of desperation. The echoes of my family's financial missteps reverberated in the ornate surroundings, drowning out any hope of a genuine connection awaiting me at the end of this unwelcome journey. For a million pounds, my autonomy had been relinquished, and the vows I was about to recite felt like shackles closing in. As I took a deep breath, my eyes reflected the turmoil within, silently pleading for an escape from the tangled web of familial obligations and societal expectations. The door swung open, signaling the commencement of a union devoid of love, choice, or happiness. My fate was sealed, and I stepped forward, a reluctant participant in the charade of a marriage that was never mine to choose. The solemn march down the aisle felt like a journey into the unknown, the weight of the wedding gown a constant reminder of my coerced transformation. As I approached the altar, my eyes met those of a stranger, my future husband, a man I had never spoken to, let alone loved. The ceremony unfolded like a surreal dream, the vows uttered with a mechanical precision that masked the absence of genuine emotion. A wedding band now adorned my finger, a symbol of a commitment forged in financial desperation rather than affection. As the officiant pronounced us, husband and wife, I couldn't shake the feeling of being a spectator in my own life. The transition into this new role was swift and unforgiving. The expectations of a wife and woman loomed large, threatening to consume the remnants of the person I once was. My days became a series of performances, each one requiring me to play a role that felt increasingly foreign. The once familiar reflection in the mirror now betrayed a woman with whom I struggled to identify. Makeup became a daily routine, and the echoes of societal expectations manifested in every piece of clothing I donned. The discomfort of the body I now inhabited became a constant companion, a relentless reminder of the trade-off made for the sake of my family. In the confines of my new life, I yearned for moments of solitude to grapple with the internal conflict that raged within. The million-pound transaction that had shaped my destiny now felt like a cruel bargain, and the void left by the absence of love was palpable. Yet, amidst the suffocating constraints, glimmers of resilience surfaced. I navigated this uncharted territory with a silent determination, finding solace in the small acts of defiance that preserved fragments of my true self. The facade of the dutiful wife and woman masked a spirit unwilling to be entirely extinguished. As the days unfolded into weeks and months, I grappled with the duality of my existence, a wife by circumstance, a woman by imposition. The million-pound price tag weighed heavy on my shoulders, but beneath it, a flicker of defiance remained, quietly awaiting its chance to ignite a spark of liberation. In the midst of my internal struggle, a subtle shift began to occur. Faced with the inevitability of my circumstances, I found a measure of strength in embracing the elements of femininity that had been thrust upon me. It wasn't about conceding defeat but rather adapting to the situation in a way that allowed me to retain some semblance of control. Dressing up in beautiful dresses became an art, a form of self-expression within the confines of my forced femininity. The vibrant colors and intricate designs were like a canvas on which I could paint traces of my own spirit. In the silks and lace, I discovered a means of asserting my identity amid the expectations placed upon me. While my relationship with my husband remained a transactional alliance, I sought solace in the small moments when my appearance brought a glimmer of satisfaction to his eyes. Adorned in carefully chosen attire, I played the role of the attentive wife, hoping that the carefully curated elegance might overshadow the underlying void. As I navigated the demands of my new life, I discovered a subtle power in the act of transformation. 
Each dress became a shield, shielding the vulnerability beneath and projecting an image of poise and grace. The act of dressing up transcended the external expectations, it became a ritual of reclaiming agency in a narrative that had been dictated by others. Yet, beneath the layers of fabric and the facade of compliance, the ember of resistance still burned. In the late hours, when the elaborate dresses were shed, I confronted the reflection that stared back at me. In those moments of vulnerability, the raw authenticity of my emotions became a secret rebellion against the constraints of my reality. So, I continued to navigate the delicate balance between compliance and self-preservation. The beautiful dresses became both my armor and my protest, a visual representation of the complex dance between surrender and silent resistance in the face of a life not of my choosing.